Hello. If you plan on registering your business, then you want to watch this video before deciding whether to register as a sole trader or a limited company. In this video, I'll be sharing the differences and also explaining why I chose one over the other when I started my photography business. Okay, so I'm just going to start off by, you know, just discussing why it's good to register your business because, I mean, you may be wondering why do I have to, the HMRC isn't putting all this work I'm putting in, I can continue taking money on the table. Yeah, you can do that, but there are also advantages to registering your business. So the first is, you know, it's law and you definitely don't want to be fined down the line for evading the tax man. The second thing is if you want a business account, you would have to be registered because they would ask for that. The third advantage is, is like, if you want to take, you know, business loans, you will have to be registered because they would ask for those documents. And then the fourth one, which I would say is quite for you personally is, let's say a couple of years late, you know, a couple of years in the future, you want to, you know, get a mortgage and, you know, the banks, you know, want to be able to understand your affordability. They would require your business history, your records of you paying yourself in order to see that you're, you know, able to afford the property. So if that's something you want to do, then you definitely want to register your business. So in a couple of years, I think with the banks, it's usually two years they look for. They want to see how much you've earned in the last two years and they use that to calculate your affordability rate <laughs> and then that way calculate how much you know loans they can give you for your mortgage so these are the good reasons to register your business okay so let's start off by talking about a sole trader so a sole trader basically means you personally own your business and there's no distinction between you and your business it means you're fully responsible for your business. Whatever happens to you, whatever happens to your business happens to you, vice versa. This also means you can easily trade in your name, but of course you can also make up a name if you prefer. So now there are different pros and cons for, you know, registering as a sole trader. I will start with the pros. So one of the pros is that registering as a sole trader is a simple and free process. You simply go to the HMRC website and um, register for self-assessment. It's free. It doesn't cost a thing. Another pros is that there's total privacy. No one has, no, you know, no one except the HMRC can see like your self-assessments, your earnings and other information about you. Another pro, pro is that you get to keep as much of your income as possible. And then the final pro I would say is that there's less paperwork being a sole trader. You simply need to um, file your self-assessment once a year and you make sure by the 31st of January you've paid whatever tax you owe. And I think sometimes if you're not able to pay at a go, they help you do payment plans. So I think that's an option as well. Okay, so now let's go to the cons of being a sole trader. Being a sole trader means you and your business are basically the same. So whatever legal or financial claims, debts, or ramification your business incurs, that directly affects you. So if you have like a mortgage or if you have any other assets, you know, if you owe someone, you're in debt or something happens legally, they can use your personal assets to recuperate, recoup, you know, whatever loss or payments that needs to be made because you're basically your business and your business is yourself. There's no distinction. So that's a big, big con. <laughs> Sorry, my mind went blank for a minute. <laughs> okay, with a sole trader, I feel there's less customer trust. I think people love to see that limited company, you know, that stamp. And so when you're a sole trader, it's just your name. Um, so yeah, that's one thing as well, depending on, you know, how you would like your brand to be perceived. 
And then the other con is that you can't open a business account, um, bank account as a sole trader. Uh, most, uh, most banks would only register um, limited companies to get a business bank account. But I would say how I've been able to like navigate that in the past, which is opening another bank account in my name and using that for business purposes only. So that way I'm not mixing and dipping my personal income and business income. They stay separate and that helps me, you know, easily, you know, file my, do my bookkeeping and all of that. Okay, so let's move over to limited companies. And I'm referring to private limited companies, of course. Um, so a private limited company basically is a different entity. Legally, it's a different entity to its owners. And so you're totally separate from that. Your business, it's its own person. You're your own person. So when it comes to like any liability, assets, debts, income, whatever, it, it it's belongs to the company and not to you. So now, of course, let's go into the pros and cons. So the first pros, you know, just similarly, you know, whatever liability your business suffers becomes the responsibility of the business alone and not you. So you're not going to be dragged for your business, you know, debts. <laughs> The second thing which is really good is once you've registered your limited company with Companies House, that name, that registered name becomes protected. So nobody else can register in that name. That's quite different with like um, a sole trader because with a sole trader, if you use your name or make up a name, if someone else goes and register that, they've beat you to it basically. And I think a way you can almost navigate that is also maybe getting a trademark so if you've come up with a really unique name for your business then you probably would want to trademark it so someone else doesn't use it because even though you've not registered that name it would be dumb for someone else to go and register that name when you have the trademark that means it's going to be an issue for them to trade with it because you can always use a different registered name with a trading name I hope I'm not confusing things, but let's just leave it simply. Once you register your business, no one else can register the same name. So that's a good pro. So another pro is that there's flexibility with how you can pay yourself as a limited company. You know, you can pay yourself a salary or you can pay yourself with dividends. Another good pro is that you can also have a pension scheme for yourself. So that means this would um, be deducted from your company's profits. Um, sorry, from your company's income before profits are calculated, which is good. So you can definitely, you know, and I believe in the UK, they allow up to 20K, yeah? So that's quite good. So you can pay yourself in different ways and you can also set up a pension scheme for yourself. And to be honest, when it comes to like brand reputation with customers and awareness, once you are a limited company, you are seen as a more serious business. Like um, I started off as a sole trader, but currently I'm a limited company. And I, I must say, writing that LTD in my invoices or like my email correspondence and stuff feels damn good. I'm like, yep take me seriously. I'm a serious business. Like whenever I'm sending my bank details to my customers who want to do bank transfer, I love putting, you know, the LTD. They know, yep, she's a registered business. She's serious. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good, good, good pro. Okay. So one of the cons, I'll just say the first one is registering the business isn't free. Although I do have to say it's quite cheap. It's just £12. Um, as of today, me recording this video, it's £12 to register your business. It's not free, but then it's not expensive. The only thing is it's more complicated, a bit more complex. So I wouldn't say too complex, but there are certain classifications and things you have to go through, awarding shares to directors. It's a lengthier process, definitely, to the self-assessment and just a bit more complicated. 
Another con is that you most likely need an accountant once you are a limited company. And this is because there's so many rules and regulations that change from year to year. And you know, while you're running your business, it's going to be difficult keeping in touch and up to date with all these constantly evolving and changing regulations by the government and an accountant's job is to keep up with all of those things and make sure they are following it up. So, um, so yeah, you most likely will need an accountant and a good accountant will cost you as well. So that's sort of the other thing to think about. And I'll definitely say it's good to have an accountant if you go this route, because, um, for example, as a self, um, as a sole trader, like I said, you file once a year and it's done. With a limited company, there's so many different things you actually have to file. If there are change of like directors, residences or information or whatever, you have to file something to update that. You also have to do your company's accounts, file that up. When you start earning enough to pay VAT, you have to like register for VAT. You have to know how to calculate the VAT is quite different depending on your industry. So for phot photographers, the amount of tax you pay is different from, let's say, a, a construction company. So there's so many things involved. So you definitely will need an accountant, I would say. Um, unlike with a sole trader for myself, it was easy just doing it myself. Another thing with the limited company is that your business records, which is at companies, which is registered with companies house is open to the public. So your customers, your competitors, your suppliers, they could have no, they are privy to this information because it's a, uh, I guess an honest, clear process. So once you're registered with Companies House, it's there. So it becomes public domain, unlike with Soul Trader, where you know things about your business remains private. Okay, now where I've gone over like the differences, I'm going to um, talk about why I personally decided to start as a Soul Trader when I started my photography business. So for the first reason is that um, it was gonna help me to keep more of my money to myself. And so um, when I started off, I didn't make more than 50K, I made less. So um, I was gonna be taxed 20%. So this is like all UK tax percentages and all of that. If you're watching this from a different country, make sure you check what those percentages are for your country. So with UK, if you're learning, um, if you're earning 50K under, you'll pay 20% tax. And because I knew I was going to be in that bracket, I decided to start off as a sole trader. And this is because when you're a limited company, it's the company is different from you. So whatever profit your company makes, um, the government, HMRC, will tax that at 19%. So now they've taxed your business 19%. And then when you take from those profits and pay yourself, they, you will then, they will then tax you as well personally another 20%. So now if you add 20 plus 19, that is what? 39. So that's 39% kind of the money you've worked for is being taxed. But if you are a sole trader, it would have been just 20%. So for me at the time, knowing I was not going to end, um, my business wasn't making more than 50K, it made sense to just be taxed the 20% and go with the rest of my money. So that's why I started as a sole trader. Another reason I started as a sole trader is because... Um, doing the self-assessment, I found it easy. Like some things, of course, I was coming across phrases and questions and terminologies that were new. But the amazing thing with the um, self-assessment platform is that they have this question mark where they explain those things. And um, I think if you're I don't want to say knowledgeable enough for some common sense and you can Google some words you don't know. You can sort of understand what that question is and answer them. And to me, it was it's lengthy in filling it all. But if you all have all your information, which you know, you just fill it in. It takes time, but it's easy to do. So, um, so yeah, so that's why I decided to do that. For me, filing self-assessment came easy for me. So 
I knew I was able, I would be able to do that. I don't need to pay an accountant. So that was one of the reasons why I decided to start as a sole trader as well. So yeah, so those are the three reasons basically why I decided to start as a sole trader. Okay, so now I'm currently registered as a limited company and this is because I decided to move over. And the main reason was basically I wanted to be able to like keep more of my money for me in terms of how I chose to register my business it was always going to be money driven I'm working hard for my money and therefore I want to be able to keep as much of it to myself you know and do all the legal things that enables me to pay tax but not just give the tax man money that I have worked out for and so over the years my income was growing year upon year and it got to the stage where um, my business was now earning more than 50k and like I said previously once you so in UK there are different tax bans depending on how much the money income you're earning and so over 50k now means um, you're going to be taxed 40 percent and i'm like why the hell am i gonna give the hmrc 40 percent of my hard-earned money and so it made sense for me to become a limited company because like i can explain with the pros of limited company um you it's quite flexible how you can pay yourself you can pay yourself a salary and dividends or you can pay yourself only dividends so at the time i was still working part-time and so my part-time income plus the income i was paying myself was going to be at a threshold it didn't make sense to be a sole trader so it made sense to move to a limited company which is why I moved to a limited company at that point as well my business was making enough money I could afford an accountant and so it also made sense to like be able to move this responsibility to someone else so in the past um, my bookkeeping I had to do it myself and I did it quite simply to be honest you don't always need to use a software like QuickBooks or whatever if you're a sole trader. Like good old spreadsheets works. Your ins and outs, monitor them. Like I said, I created a separate account, um, bank account and that way I could clearly see everything going on in my business. So it was easy for me to just manually do that. At the end of every month, I just manually put on the spreadsheet, you know, what my business transactions were. And it's simple, you're a photographer, it's not like you're doing thousands of products a month, that would be crazy to do manually. But as a photographer, you have like, you know, a certain amount of clients you have a month, so it's easy to put that as the income in. And then depending on your cost, on like marketing, software and other things you do, it's easy to put that in as your, you know, expenditure as well. <clears throat> So that was easy for me to do on a spreadsheet. But now being like a limited company, having so many things going on, like I have people on payment plans. So I have different money coming in different times of the month. There's just a lot moving here and there. In addition to the other processes and other things I need to file as a limited company, I seriously cannot do that myself. So I could now afford to pay an accountant. So I moved to a limited company and was able to do that. So for me, that's the reason why I then moved to a limited company. So in conclusion, I'll say you really need to decide for yourself what is like your driving force, what is really important for yourself and your business at the time of you know starting and wanting to register this business. If it's driven by I want to keep as much money to myself as possible, then you need to look at what your business is going to be earning in that year and see which of the structures make sense. If you're earning less than 50k, from my experience, I would just start a sole trader. But if you know your business is going to make six figures, then you definitely, well, not, I'm not going to say definitely. <laughs> You look at what the rules and regulations are in your country and do the maths for yourself. For me, the maths made sense that I moved to a limited company because with that structure, I could pay myself dividends. Dividends in the UK are taxed at 9% rather than 40%, you can see. There are other things involved as well, which I'm not going to go deep into, but depending on what your motivator is decide if you know sole trader or limited is you know important for you if you can off the bat pay for an accountant and you know the other things that come with a limited company then go for it 
if you rather like you know start small because you're bootstrapping you're building your business gradually year on year you want to minimize your cost and the complexity to run your business then perhaps a sole trader is best for you so I hope all of the information I've shared has given you a lot of insights on how to decide about which business structure will work best for you. If you've enjoyed this video, then I know you will definitely find this one useful where I talk about the six software every photographer must have in order to run a profitable business. This is it for now. And remember, you don't have to be a struggling artist. See you next week.